Alright, I'm making this video for any sort of mod pack that has Pam's Harvest Craft Spice of Light. This one has this Blightfall mod pack that has the Cooking for Blockheads, which allows this form of a multi-block structure. This has all the basic uh, Pam's Harvest Craft cooking tools, the juicer, the mixer, the cutting board, the mortar and pestle. And it also has the sink, which supplies infinite water. I have two fridges uh, for storage, a cooking table, which allows you to see the recipes and sort by saturation and such, and the cooking oven. The cooking oven also has four inventory slots for storage. I have the skillet, the pot, the saucepan, and the bakeware over here. As you can see with the fridges, the fridges are dyeabled by different colors, and these tool racks are from Cooking for Blockhead. They work just similar to Tinker's Construct drawing rack. You just plop something right up there, and it's fine. Uh, the cooking oven, I have them being supplied by sticks. Uh, different people don't think it's efficient. I just have a system in the back here that has a hopper supplying sticks into the oven. I just made a stupid amount of sticks stuck down a chest in the back. Have a hopper hopper. Kind of cooking oven. And it just keeps a good supply that way whenever you need it. Uh, different items that I recommend for keeping in the fridge. Uh, the... I have three basic categories. You have your basic early game items that are available in this mod pack. Um, different mod packs, uh, like if, if it's Crash Landing or other sort of such, have different things. Uh, this one centers around the Blightfall mod pack with the cooking for blockheads, so that's what this is applying to. But salt, which is found very quickly underground. Stock, which is made from bones, meat, or any sort of vegetable. You have dough, which is fresh water, which the sink supplies an infinite amount of, and uh, efficiently. Because this mud pack, it's not easy to make fresh water. You only get one bucket equals one fresh water, instead of the four that it typically does. Uh, but that and the flour, which a basic wheat farm, which every person in Minecraft should have set up quickly. Uh, bread, which the bread is made differently, because... Pr Primitive bread is separate from normal bread. Primitive bread is just three of the wheat or barley together. But actual bread, traditional bread, comes from flour, which you have to grind with a mortar and pestle, the wheat or the barley, and then cook it. Uh, snowballs are one that I highly recommend, just for a diversity aspect. They're easy and efficient to get with a simple snowman in a neutral biome. Uh, as long as it's a plains or colder biome, uh, well, forest or colder biome. Uh, seeds from any sort of the plant, just, it doesn't, you can craft the cooked item, I mean the item into a seed. Uh, different mod packs will allow you to plant the item directly, sometimes you have to manually plant it back, craft it back into a seed. And then sugar, for, it's another basic supply, I mean. Just out here, you set up a basic sugar farm, and you're good to go. Keeping a basic stock of the cooked and uncooked meat here for keeping stock of it. It gives you a variety for the meat cooking options. And so this is just once you have either an animal farm set up where you're breeding animals, or in this mod pack, for example, when this island when this was the only pure area around, passive mobs were spawning because it was the only place that passive mobs could spawn. And they were either getting killed by the taint and or tainted animals, or I was killing them manually and just harvesting extra. And then the final thing is the milk and egg bread products. Is Once you have milk, you have access to cheese, butter, and heavy cream, which I don't have featured here because I don't keep a large stock of it as well as a basic chicken slash egg farm to keep a supply of eggs. This fridge has everything that I consider to be your basic building blocks of the Pam's Harvest Craft cooking, at least for this mod pack. And over here I have my secondary cooking. That's clock over here. These are getting quite absurd. But everything over here... Uh, these are all my extras. Pumpkins from Basic Pumpkin Farm, a backstock of extra meat, 
mushrooms, uh, fish, which in this mod would crack for the requesting items and such. Getting, I got a basic leadstone energy cell, just plopped it right next to a fissure, put it on the output to that side, plopped a locker or a chest right on top, and then boom, you just got automatic fish. And even if it gives you a weird Pam's Harvest Craft fish or that sort of such, you can convert it into a basic roll fish for that. But just keeping any sort of your basic extra supplies over here. Also, cocoa beans. Uh, the two big things that you're going to want to be able to get if in this mod pack you can't craft the Pam's Harvest Craft trees. Typically, you can. You just take one of the items plus the sapling of the tree it's supposed to be on. You can craft it. You can't in this mod pack. But keeping either some basic nuts around the cocoa beans from this and getting peppercorns. Uh, one item that is very important that I have even yet to get for this mod pack is the spice leaf. Spice leaf is really nice for getting a new diversity of food. But it's just when it's hit or miss when requesting sapling bags. But so as you cook items, what I like to do is this extra locker, this is not seen as a part of the multi-block. So you don't have to worry about this getting consumed. But this is where I like, I like to keep at least two of every single type of food item that I cook or going to eat. I even keep some basic food items like raw beef, uh, caramel, things that are typically ingredients to other things. Even if it's just itself, like it's actually supposed to be used for something else, you could still eat it. It's just something to cycle through your hunger percentage. But the Spice of Life mod adds the lunchbox, which if you shift right click, or if you right click it when it's closed, it opens it up and allows you to see what's inside of it. So you could see your different saturations items. The lunchbox is highly intelligent for picking both a diverse set of food items as well as picking a variety of food items. So all these, if you see, have not been eaten recently within my past 200 hunger. So they're 100% satisfying for saturation. But if you shift right click and you open it, it actually allows you to eat it. I just ate earlier, so I'm not going to be able to show it. But if you eat it when it's open, it'll pick one of the items that you need to. Like this right now, since I'm full on saturation, the next item it's going to pick is one of my lowest saturating items. But if I was very hungry after traveling or sustaining damage, it would pick one of the more saturated. The thing to note about the lunchbox is it can only hold two of every single type of food that stores in it. Now, it holds six food altogether, so it's 12 food total. So if you need an extremely long trip or such, because as you can see, we have 18 bread in here, but it can only, it only held two in there. So if you, need, if you need to go on a large trip, bring two lunchboxes, because it's only two inventory spots for uh, 24 things of food but it's made with just six iron basically two four six because each one's a weighted pressure plate and reusable lunchbox it's absolutely intelligent how the lunchbox works is once it's open when you can right click on an inventory is whenever it cycles through and it chooses items from the inventory that you right click on that's as long as it's an applicable inventory uh, some different chests or different blocks it has trouble seeing. Lockers, uh, better chests, uh, different sort of inventories like that, it has perfectly easy time seeing. If it's something, uh, like it can't see into AE systems or that sort of such, but at least as far as I know, unless it's had an update. But so once you're over here for the cooking table, you could sort it by if you need something that's highly saturating really quick, like the mince pie. This one, it's a cooked meat. This is why it's good to have a nut sapling or that sort of such. Is it, this one doesn't have to be pistachio. It could be like a date nut or that sort of such. But so fruit, meat, you get dough, butter, and nut, you get mince pie. Uh, cheesecake is another one. This one is once again with heavy cream, flour, egg, sugar. Super duper simple. Uh, cheesecake you could also uh, place, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. You could place and eat it from the ground, or you could eat it from inventory. 
this is one thing that what I like to do. This is all the basic ingredients. If you have anything, uh, take for example, the, how this needs heavy cream, I like to keep a make sure that I always keep tin of something like we, this is mayo, heavy cream. I always like to keep at least tin or more in extra storage, but I have well over that. Also, something like mayonnaise, keeping tin of any sort of food item that is used for crafting over here is good for diversity because keeping where is it uh, like chicken. One of the chicken sandwiches. Don't see it immediately available. Uh, chicken sandwich. It's just raw chicken, bread, mayo. And that's why it's good to have raw and cooked meat. Is that way when it wants to have a specific one, it'll be available. Also, things like pasta. Pasta itself doesn't have much of a use. Like You can't eat it as is. But once you actually cook with it, you'll be able to get a wide diversity of items. Now, granted, I don't have any tomatoes or that sort of such, so I can't make anything fancier than this. But the, like you can see, a lot of these basic items, like this one, it's mushroom, but you need cheese and toast. But you get stuffed mushroom. Fantastic saturation. Seed soup is also another one. This comes in from that stock we have in stock. And any sort of seed. I know for me, seed soup I ate quite a bit of in the beginning because of the, I wasn't paying attention. And also things like the eggs. Eggs are, I like to keep at least like five stacks of eggs because they only stack in 16. But eggs you could chew through really quickly because some of these eggs you could actually use. It doesn't stop. You could actually use eggs for other items. I think a boiled egg, you could make an egg sandwich. But so once you know an item can't be crafted further, or you know you haven't eaten it within recently, two of every single edible food item, like the pasta doesn't have a saturation, so I can't eat it. But So everything that is edible, I keep in here. Even if it's something like the uh, grilled asparagus where I can't eat it, at worst, if it might be have to be something I eat one day just to get through. But this is the biggest thing that I could recommend for keeping a good supply. Uh, having basic farms, I mean, nothing too simple. Also with the Pam's Harvest Craft, as long as it's not disabled, you should just be able to go through and right-click without actually having to physically break the block. Also, sometimes uh, different plants don't like interacting when right-clicking. They attempt to do something else, so it's always good to have a clean inventory hand when right-clicking. But this is also another thing to note about lockers. Lockers can only be accessed from the face. They cannot be accessed from the back. They have to be accessed from the face. But that's all the advice I could give for cooking. The fridges also, I think, I don't know if I mentioned or not, are actually dyeable. Uh, you could click them with either cocoa beans, ink sacks, uh, yellow flowers, what have you. And you're actually able to dye them. But... That's all the advice I have for keeping saturation good for a mod pack that has both the Spice of Life, Pam's Harvest Craft, and if you get lucky, the cooking for blockheads.